Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired cook from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest video recipe. And in this one I'll be sharing this amazing cherry trifle recipe. It looks complicated but they're actually surprisingly easy to make and will definitely impress your family and friends as a stunning dessert after your Christmas dinner. And the great thing about this dessert is you can make it well in advance. So after your Christmas meal all you have to do is take it out of the fridge and serve it to your guests. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and PayPal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. Okay, let's get on with today's recipe. Okay, now I'll be making individual trifles, so here are some ideas that you can make yours in. Any wine glass would be fine. You can use these tumblers too. Another larger wine glass. Or you can make one big trifle in a dedicated trifle bowl, or even a simple glass casserole dish like this one. But, as this is a Christmas trifle, I'll be making mine in these fabulous crystal wine glasses. But these are not just for Christmas, you can make these trifles any time of the year really. Right, for the fruit for these trifles, I'll be using strawberries and raspberries in mine. But you can use just about any fruit you like really, fresh or canned. But bear in mind there are some fruits that prevent jelly or jello from setting, including pineapple, kiwi, mango, papaya. There's plenty of info online on what you can't use in jelly. I'll start by chopping these strawberries and raspberries into smaller pieces. Once cut you can add a little sugar. This will draw out the juices and give them a deeper colour and a sweeter taste, as the fruit in the UK can be a bit tart and hard in the winter months. Right, I'll set that aside for now. OK, there are many ways to make your jelly. You can use these gelatin sheets or the crystals dissolved in a fruit juice of your choice. Just follow the directions on the packets. These jelly cubes will be very familiar to my UK viewers and they are flavoured so you don't need a fruit juice for these. But what I'm going to use is the strawberry flavoured no sugar jelly crystals. So for these all I need to add is boiling water. Unfortunately these are not vegetarian by the way. These two small packets will give me around 570 mils, that's one pint of jelly. Right that's the crystals in the jug. All I have to do now is add the boiling water and stir. OK, I'll set that aside for now. Right, for a trifle you need a sponge base and I'm going to use about half of this plain Madeira cake. I've also cut the darker sides off the cake, just for appearance. Now, this is where a lot of people go wrong by adding too much sponge. You only need a little as shown, because when the hot jelly is added the sponge can just about double in size, so use it sparingly. Right, time to add the sherry. I like to use the sweet cream sherry. Remember this is alcohol, so if these are for children or you don't use alcohol for whatever reason, just leave it out. The trifle is delicious with or without it, you don't have to use it. And that's the beauty about making individual trifles, you can add to some and not others. I like to add about 10 mils to each of my individual glasses. Next add the fruit that you prepared earlier. Once again, don't overfill. Next just pour over your hot jelly. Once done, the sponge, fruit and jelly should fill about half of whatever vessel you're using. OK, so far so good. Now that needs to go into your fridge for a couple of hours or until it's set before moving on to the custard. For the custard I'll be using this bird's custard powder, which again will be very familiar to my UK viewers. 
you can buy it online, but if you can't get hold of it where you live, you can always make the custard from scratch using my egg custard video recipe. I'll leave a link in the description box below to the video. But, like I said, I'll be using this custard powder. A word of caution here, don't start making the custard until you know the jelly has set. I'll start by adding the powder to a saucepan. Next in goes the sugar. Now add a little of the milk at first, followed by the vanilla extract. OK, give that a good mix until there are no lumps left at all. And then it's safe to add the rest of the milk. Turn on the heat and continuously stir until it comes up to a steady but gentle boil. This could take anywhere between 3 to 5 minutes, but you must stay with it continuously stirring, or I guarantee it will stick to the bottom of the pan. Turn off the heat and pour it back into the jug. Make doubly sure that your jelly is completely set and add some of the custard as shown. By the way, I'm only showing one individual trifle being made, the rest I'm doing off camera. Right, now get that back into the fridge for about a half an hour until the custard sets. OK, you can now make the Chantilly cream for the top of your trifle. Now this is quite an easy part of the recipe. All you do is add the cream, vanilla and sugar to a bowl. and whisk until it thickens up to a consistency shown in the video. Don't make it too thick. If you do go too far, you can always rescue it by adding a couple of tablespoons of milk and gently mixing it in. Right, once that's done, get it covered and into the fridge. And at this point, I hope you don't mind if I give my two recipe books a bit of a plug. The books have lots of our favourite easy to follow recipes from our work kitchens in them. Both books are available in the website shop along with lots of other equipment I use in the videos. And by popular demand the skeleton style oven gloves are now available too. Just click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that will take you directly to the website shop. So if you're looking for some great Christmas presents get your order in as soon as you can. Okay, once your custard is set, you can add the cream as shown. Try to push the cream down to the custard. It's quite easy once you get the hang of it. Keep it shy of the top of the glass. If it does get a bit messy, you can always clean it up with kitchen paper like this. For the toppings, it's entirely up to you and I will give you a few ideas in a moment. But for this one, I'm starting with a few of these toasted flaked almonds, just in the centre, not all the way to the edge of the glass. Next, I'm going to place some raspberries all around the edge of the glass, just slightly and lightly pushing them down into the cream. And if you make yours this way, make sure your raspberries are all around the same size. You could just finish there, but I like to add a few of these candy Christmas ornaments too. These little candy gold stars go nicely with this one. One more option that some chefs would use is to mix up a little glaze. It's only a couple of teaspoons of sugar dissolved in four teaspoons of hot water. Just gently give the fruit a thin coat of it. This just brightens it up and takes that dullness away from the fruit and makes it much more presentable. And it only takes a few seconds to do. And there you go, that's one finished and it looks great. Here's another couple of ideas. A few almonds with chocolate sprinkled on or just chocolate with more of those candy ornaments on the top. All the chocolate is is a flake bar just crushed up. That's the one I made in the video. 
and this one is simply a strawberry sliced thin and glazed on top of the cream. Obviously yours will be all the same design, I'm just giving you a few ideas. And here's a couple of ideas without the cream layer. And this last one I put a bit of everything on because this is the one I'm going to taste test. And honestly, all joking aside, these are simple to make, absolutely delicious and can be made well in advance. And I guarantee you'll certainly get a big thumbs up from your guests. And as promised at the beginning, here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And they are Jeff Miner, Claudia Lindner, Gabrielle Armstrong, Carl Brueggemann, Laurie, Gordon Aubrey Jones, Jan Eric Gustafsson, Nicholas Holt, and Sandra Oss. Thanks very much, guys. I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well, thank you again for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe by hitting the circle above. If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen, and bye for now.